So we are going to be continuing our adding and subtracting fractions, only we're going to go one step further. Instead of having common denominators like we did last time, our denominators this time are not going to be the same. So when you're adding and subtracting fractions that have unlike denominators, what you need to do is you need to rewrite the fractions as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. So if they don't have a common denominator, you need to make it so that they do have a common denominator. So thinking back to fraction work that you guys did in middle school, and a little bit in elementary school, if we're trying to add these two fractions here, I got a denominator of 7 and 3. Can't add a denominator of 7 and 3. I need to make them so those are the same number. So I figure out if I do 7 times 3, I would get a 21. So I'm going to go with a common denominator of 21. In order to make that happen, though, I need to change my fractions so that they are equivalent, but they have that denominator of 21. So the way I would do that, if I look at my first one, my 2 over 7 here, I would have to multiply the 7 by 3 to make it 21, which means I also have to multiply the top by the 3 to keep it equivalent. Because really, what does 3 over 3 equal? One. So I'm really multiplying the fraction by a 1, so I'm not changing it, but I am making it just a bigger version of it. So then 3 times this 2 gives me 6, and then it's over a 21. Same thing happens with my 1 third. I have to make it a denominator of 21, so i got to multiply my top and my bottom by 7. So again, I'm really multiplying it by a 1. I'm just trying to do an equivalent fraction. So once I get my denominator of 21, I keep my denominator add my numerator so I get 13 over 21. So you got to make a common denominator and then make your equivalent fractions and then you can add them. <coughs> so to find the least common denominator of a rational expression, first we have to factor all denominators into their prime factors. Really, that just means you got to take it and you got to factor it out as far as you can possibly go. Remember, prime factors are those who only have factors of 1 and itself. So, like, for example, 3 would be a prime factor because the only way you can get a 3 is 1 times 3. 5 is a prime factor because the only way you can get that is 1 times 5. So then the least common denominator... <coughs> will be the blank of all the factors of the first denominator times all the factors of the second denominator. The word we're looking for there is product. So it's the product of all of the denominator or all of the factors of the two different denominators. Which I realize when you say it in words it's probably a little confusing, so we'll try some examples. Hopefully that'll make it a little easier for you to understand. So for all values of the variable for which the expressions are defined, combine, and simplify. So again, we're trying to subtract these two, so what we need to do is we need to give them a common denominator and they don't currently have one. So the easiest way to do that is just take your two denominators, multiply them together. So what's 3 times 5? 15. So we want to use a common denominator of 15. So now we have to change our fractions so that they have that denominator. 3 right now is not currently a 15. What do we multiply it by to make it a 15? We multiply it by 5. So that means we also have to multiply the top by 5 because you've got to keep it equal. So you're going to multiply the bottom, you've got to multiply the top. So 5 times x gives me 5x. 5 times 1 gives me 5. So my new numerator is 5x plus 5. And that's over 15. So let's do it for the second one now. So we have a 5, need to make it a 15, so what do we need to multiply by? Three, so we're going to multiply the top also by three, because five times three is 15. Three times x is three x. Three times negative one gives me a negative three. So now we have a common denominator. They're both over a 15. So we keep our denominator, just like we were doing last class. 
we are subtracting. So I got to remember to subtract that 3x and that minus 3. When I subtract that negative 3, it now becomes a positive 3. So 5x minus 3x will give me a 2x. And then 5 plus 3 would give us an 8. So 2x plus 8 is our new numerator. Can we factor 2x plus 8? Is there a GCF there? Yeah, what is it? 2. So we always have to try to see if there's anything we can reduce. So when I pull out that 2, I get 2 times x plus 4 over 15. Can we reduce 2 and 15 at all? No, I mean, there's no common number that goes into them, so can't actually reduce that one. That ends up being our final answer. So 2 times x plus 4 over 15. Or if you wanted to leave it in this form, that would also work too, since we couldn't reduce it any further. Either of those two work. All right, let's take a look at number 2. 6 minus 3 over x minus 3. Well, first off, what is that 6 over? A 1. We don't always write it, but it is over a 1. So we got to get a common denominator. So a common denominator between 1 and x minus 3. So if we multiply those two together, what's 1 times x minus 3? x minus 3. Again, you should multiply your two denominators together. So 1 times x minus 3 is x minus 3. That's our common denominator. Now, the second fraction is already over x minus 3. Are we going to have to change that? No. So I'm just going to bring down my 3, because that already has our common denominator. So that does not need to get changed. What do we have to multiply that first fraction by? It's over a 1. I need it to be over x minus 3. So what do we have to multiply 1 by? x minus 3. You also need to multiply the top by the x minus 3. Again, keep it even. So then I'll distribute my 6. 6 times x gives me 6x. 6 times negative 3 gives me a negative 18. So now we'll do our subtraction. So we got... Our denominator, x minus 3, keep that the same. I only got the 6x in the top. I don't have any other x's, so that's going to stay as 6x. So the negative 18 minus 3. Negative 18 minus 3, what does that give us? So again, we should check to see if we can reduce this. Is there a GCF in our top? Yep, we can pull out a 3. And then we would get 2x minus 7 over x minus 3. So is there actually anything we can reduce there? No. So either one of these would work. Either my fraction that's in pink or the fraction that's in brown. Both of those would be acceptable answers. All right, let's try a few more. All right, we got four more examples. Let's take a look at number three. We got an x minus two, and we got an x as our common denominator. Now, a lot of people would like to then tell me, okay, so our denominator should be x minus 2 because the second one already has the x, so you know we just got to put the minus 2 there. You, you can't do that. You can't just subtract 2 from the fractions. You can only multiply stuff by the fractions. You can't just put a minus 2 at the bottom there. So our common denominator for this would be you multiplying both of them together. So x times the x minus 2 because you can't just put minus 2 there. So our first fraction here already has the x minus 2 portion to it. It's missing 
the x, so I'm going to have to multiply this by x, which means I multiply my top also by x. So x times 3 gives me 3x. My second fraction has the x. It's missing the x minus 2 that we determined needs to be in our common denominator. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by x minus 2. So 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times negative 2 gives me a negative 4. So now we can do our subtraction. I'm going to keep my denominator, so x times x minus 2. I'm going to subtract the top, which means it's going to be a negative 2x. That 4 is now going to turn positive, so I'm subtracting a negative. So 3x minus 2x would be 1x, and then we got the plus 4. So is there anything I can cancel there? Nope. So that would be our final answer. What's the one thing I'm missing from that, though? What have we been putting with all of our fractions so far, this unit? Our restrictions, what are those two numbers x can't be? and 2. Remember, restrictions are always from the original, so it can't be 2 because of that first one, can't be 0 because of that second one. Okay. Let's take a look at number 4. So number 4, we got x squared minus 4 and then x plus 2. How can we factor x squared minus 4? plus 2, x minus 2. So once I've now factored it, that's going to give me my common denominator because both denominators already have the x plus 2. The first one just also has the x minus 2. So both of those have to be there in your common denominator. I will say 95% of the time, when you factor, that ends up being your common denominator, whatever that factor is, factor form is. So that first fraction, it's already over our common denominator. So I don't need to multiply the top or bottom by anything. It's just going to stay as x. Our second fraction already has the x plus 2 in it. So what do we have to multiply it by? x minus 2. Multiply the top and bottom times the one that it doesn't have. It doesn't have the x minus 2. So then 1 times x minus 2 would give us x minus 2. So then we're subtracting. So that means this x is going to become negative. That negative 2 becomes positive because I'm subtracting the negative. So I keep my denominator. What happens to those x's in the numerator? x minus x, they cancel each other out. So then we're just left with the plus 2. So it's just positive 2 in the numerator. x and minus x cancel each other out. So what are those two numbers x cannot be? In here. What are the two numbers x can't be? 2 and negative 2. Alright, let's try two more. Two more, two more. 
So number five, again, we got that trinomial there, so let's factor that first. So I set up my two sets of parentheses. Will our signs be same or different? The same, that plus means they're same. Subtraction means they're both going to be negative. So it multiplies to 24, but will add to give us 11. Multiplies 24 adds to give us 11. 8 and 3. So now that that's factored, let's figure out what our common denominator is going to be. Both fractions already have the what? They both already have x minus 3. So x minus 3 definitely going to be part of our common denominator because it's actually there in both. What else do we have in our denominator? The x minus 8. So that's going to be the other part. Is there anything else that was part of one of the denominators that we missed? Nope. So that's going to be our common denominator, the x minus 3 times the x minus 8. And again, as I was saying on that last one, 95% of the time, whatever you factor it out to be is going to end up being what your common denominator is. So that first fraction doesn't change. It already has our common denominator, so the numerator is going to stay as a 3. Second fraction only has the x minus 3, so which part is it missing? The x minus 8, so that's what we need to multiply that original fraction by, the x minus 8. So then 1 times x minus 8 would just give us x minus 8. So now adding, we now have a common denominator. x minus 3, x minus 8. Keep that denominator. Adding this time, so adding our numerators, the x has nothing to combine with, so it's going to stay as x. And then 3 plus negative 8 would give us a negative 5. And then if we cancel that with anything in the bottom? No, because so we got a minus 5 and we got a 3 and an 8 in the bottom. So what are those two numbers x can't be? 3 and 8. There we go. All right, and then number 6 is my other 5% of the time. So let's factor both of those. So looking at our first trinomial, we got x squared minus 4x plus 3. Signs are both going to be negative. So what multiplies to 3, but we'll add for 4. 1 and 3. Not many choices there. So then we'll factor the second fraction also. Signs are going to be different this time. Well, again, the only options we have to multiply for 3 would be 3 and 1. And my 3 is going to be positive to give us that plus 2 in the middle. Let's figure out these common denominators. So what do both of them have after we factored? Yeah, so x minus 1 is definitely going to be a part of this because they both had it. So then that first fraction also had x minus 3, whereas the second fraction also had x plus 3. So those both have to be part of the denominator as well. So this time we have three terms, or three factors in our denominator. We got the x minus 1 that they both had, the x minus 3 that was in the first one has to be part of both of them, and then the x plus 3 that was in the second one has to be part of both of them. So when you factor, whatever's there has to be in the denominator. So then, taking a look here. This first fraction is missing the x plus 3, so that's what we got to multiply top and bottom by. 
They had the minus 1, the minus 3, it was missing the plus 3, so that's the one we multiply with. So x times x gives us x squared. x times 3 gives us a 3x. So x squared plus 3x. So which one was the second fraction missing? Which of our factors down here? It had the plus 3, it had the minus 1, it was missing the minus 3. So that's what we multiply by. Multiply top and bottom by x minus 3. We got a lot of multiplying to do here. We got to distribute the x. And we got to distribute that negative 3. So x times x gives us x squared. x times that minus 3 gives me negative 3. So then distributing my 3, negative 3 times x gives me another negative 3, and then negative 3 times negative 3 gives me a positive 9. So now we will subtract so I'm going to keep my denominator leave it out factor don't multiply that whole thing out. So we're subtracting, so that means this is going to become a negative x squared. Both of our three x's are going to turn what? Positive. And then our 9 is going to turn negative, because again, we're subtracting, so all of our signs there are going to change. So x squared minus x squared cancels each other out, that'd be 0. 3x plus 3x plus 3x. What would that give us? 3x plus 3x plus 3x. 3 plus 3 gives us? Plus 3 is 9. And then we've got our minus 9 at the end. Can we factor that numerator at all? Does it have a GCF? Yes, it does. It's got 9. So I'm going to pull out my 9. So I pull out 9, I get x minus 1. This time we can actually do some reducing. What's going to cancel? The x minus 1. So I get 9 over x minus 3 times x plus 3. And then there's three numbers x can't be. So if you look at your common denominator, that's where you're going to see the three numbers x can't be. Yep, so from here, x can't be 1. From this one, x can't be 3. And then from the plus 3, x won't be negative 3. Remember, just change those signs. There's our final answer for that one.